Hello and welcome. Southwest of Sydney is the Camden Museum of Aviation, now sadly closed to the public. There is a de Havilland DH-98 Mosquito fighter bomber being restored. This machine is the sole survivor of the Royal Air Force's World War II 618 Squadron. 618 Squadron was formed to use the secretive highball mine. This weapon was the light version of the heavier bouncing bomb used to great effect by the dam busters. The attacks on the hydroelectric dams in the Westphalia area of Germany caused much harm. Engineer and inventor Barnes Wallace had been investigating the possibility of utilising the skipping properties of an object over a water surface. He reasoned that breaching the walls of major dams would be achieved by sinking bombs at the base of the dam walls. These dams were protected by anti-torpedo netting. RAF 617 Squadron, using modified Lancaster bombers, carried out the raid. The concept of a bouncing weapon was not new. No. Naval gunners in the 19th century discovered that they could increase the range of cannonballs by bouncing them off the water like a skipping stone in a pond. Earlier in World War II, British pilots reported that when they dropped their bombs short of enemy shipping they were attacking, they would sometimes skip over the water and hit the target. In safe harbours, enemy warships were protected by nets making attack by torpedo useless, just as with those dams. A skipping bomb could skip over these and sink alongside the hull of a ship. Royal Navy boffins had now read Barnes Wallace's paper, Spherical Bomb Surface Torpedo. They knew that exploding a weapon underneath the target's hull took advantage of the bubble pulse effect typical of underwater explosions. This greatly increased their effectiveness. The Admiralty ordered trials of a smaller version of the Dam Busters bomb for anti shipping purposes. The principal target for highball were the ships of the Kriegsmarine, the battleship Tirpitz and the two pocket battleships Scharnhorst and Gesnau were a priority. Eliminating these ships would free the British surface fleet for future distant operations, such as those against Japan. Wallace had demonstrated that considerably less explosive would be needed to pierce a ship's hull than to breach a massive dam, and so two sizes of weapons were developed concurrently. By February 1943, the two weapons had been trialled with dummy models and now were ready to be tested using operational aircraft. Highball had developed into a spherical weapon of 30 inch diameter containing about 600 pounds, that's 270 kilos, of Torpex. The hydrostatic fuse was similar to those used in naval depth charges. Originally, both fighter bombers were considered, but the more recently introduced Mosquito had superior performance, which made it more suitable. In April 1943, 618 Squadron was formed within the coastal command of the RAF. The task was to use highball to sink the turpits in Allen Ford in Norway. The next months were spent in perfecting, dropping and release techniques using dummy wooden clad weapons against a target ship named Bonaventure moored in a lock in Scotland. It was found that to achieve maximum effect, a high ball had to be dropped from a height of no more than 60 feet at the aircraft speed of 360 miles per hour. Two high balls were carried in the modified bomb bay of the Mosquito with the capability of being released either singly or together. Before release, the bomb was given a backspin using a ram air turbine. After launch, the weapon skipped across the water, travelling slightly behind the launching aircraft in order to avoid the Mosquito being caught in the detonation. On reaching the target, the weapon would strike the ship's side then sink to a depth of some 30 feet, whereupon the hydrostatic pistol would explode the charge. The modified mosquitoes were all ready by the end of June 1943. Then the Germans moved the goalposts 
by repositioning Tirpitz North. Here it was beyond the range of the Scottish-based mosquitoes. The plan had apparently all been for nothing, and in September 1943 the squadron was disbanded with its aircraft being placed in storage and the air crew dispersed. It seemed that this was the end of the highball saga. Nine months later, in June 1944, the war was going well in Europe for the Allies. Attention was turned to the great advantages that might come from using highball against the Japanese fleet in the east. It was decided to resurrect the dormant project. This time, there was an interesting enhancement. The attack would come from carrier-based aircraft. The project would involve resuscitating the Mothball 29 highball mosquitoes and modifying them for carrier-borne operation. This involved fitting them with an arrestor gear for the deck landing and more powerful Merlin 25 engines and larger four-bladed propellers. This was to take five months, which could be spent in training the air crews in operating from a carrier and trialling the operation of a comparatively large twin-engine aircraft from aircraft carriers. This had never been attempted before, probably for good reason. The only precedent for this had been when the United States sent B-25 bombers off the US Navy carrier Hornet to attack Tokyo. Colonel James Doolittle had not planned that they should land back on the Hornet. 61A Squadron would be equipped with 29 highball aircraft, three photo reconnaissance aircraft and 150 highballs. Training the air crews in carrier operation was carried out first using a dummy carrier flight deck marked out on an airfield and subsequent landings and takeoffs on the elderly battleship HMS Malaya off Invergordon in Scotland. For this purpose, they used five Fleet Air Arm Barracuda single-engine torpedo aircraft, the largest machine which was available at the time. Captain Eric Winkle Brown, Fleet Air Arm pilot, was called upon to train the RAF pilots in deck landings. The whole objective of these trials was not really that the Navy wanted a, a mosquito on deck. Um, they had decided that that was probably going a step too far. But I found out later, and it was never mentioned in the early part what the object of all this was, but eventually I ran into Barnes Wallace and um, realised something was on the door because he was... Uh, I'd been sent up to an airfield called Beckles in um, Norfolk, and uh, there was a squadron there, and I was to demonstrate deck landing to them on the airfield. And I thought, now, why am I demonstrating this to a bunch of RAF boys? But then, in the hangar, I came across Barnes Wallace moving around, and I asked him what he was up to. And he was very reticent to talk about it at all. But eventually, um, through squeezing both the RAF and Barnes Wallace, I reckon I found that it was all a preparation for Operation Highball. This was going to be sending two carriers to Japan. Um, loaded with mosquitoes, uh, carrying the spinning bomb. Not the dam busters type bomb, which looked like an oil uh, can, an oil uh, drum, uh, um, but a totally spherical bomb, which would fit into the mosquito bomb bay. Uh, still protruding, but it would go in there. The idea was to make a dam busters type attack on capital ships, capital ships in Japanese harbours, and um, then return to the carrier and uh, attempt to land on, or bail out or whatever. 
Um, they hoped to recover the bodies because there were 24 going to take part in this operation. Two aircraft carriers carrying between them 24 bodies. The RAF were given five barracudas to familiarise themselves with deck landing. Now, the Barracuda is probably the easiest deck landing aircraft you can ever find, but they managed to prang all five of them. So I really wasn't too hopeful how the outcome was going to be about when they came back from to the ships, if they came back. The RAF pilots managed to crash all five barracudas. When ready, the complete squadron consisting of aircraft, personnel, highballs and full support facilities were embarked with their aircraft as flight deck cargo on board two escort carriers, HMS ships Stryker and Fencer. They arrived in Melbourne just before Christmas 1944. On arrival, the aircraft were transported to the factory at Fishman's Bend for checking after their prolonged exposure to the elements and then flown to their future base at RWF Narrow Mine in New South Wales, west of Dubbo. A further 12 disassembled mosquitoes were sent to Australia to act as training spares. These were assembled at the de Havilland factory at Mascot, Sydney, early in 1945. The problem was that there was now no suitable targets of the Imperial Japanese Navy remaining in the Southwest Pacific. To solve this setback, it was decided to deploy elements of the squadron to the forward base at Manus. This manoeuvre was frustrated by the United States Navy, who objected to the deployment of the RAF unit in their area. Jealousy, I guess. In any event, 618 Squadron was fully disbanded at Narramine in June 1945. Some of the squadron's tail hook fitted mosquitoes joined the RAAF and the ground crews lent a hand on other airfields in Australia until they could be repatriated back to the United Kingdom. The remaining aircraft were stripped of their military equipment and sold off. The mosquito, now being restored at Camden, was sold to a farmer at Tommingley, New South Wales. And the highballs themselves? Well, in early July, the inhabitants of Sydney heard a massive explosion as the top secret ordnance was destroyed at the Royal Australian Navy's Newington Arms Depot. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe.